What's up guys, Mike from Ecom Knives and this is part two. Two. <laughs> uh, we're gonna shape these now. Uh, I don't know what kind of shape I'm gonna do, but I think I'm gonna do some kind of uh, you know, nice curve or whatever. You know, do something like uh, <laughs> like these ones here. So you get a nice big radius there. Very, very nice, generous finger relief and rounded. But here's where we left off. Those are our scales from the last one, and they're just being held together uh, by those standoffs. Now they're all pretty much shaped. Uh, we can go and touch it up one final time later on, but right now. I have my grinder laying on its side <coughs> and for those of you uh, who have asked, and I've had a few of you ask how I did this because this is a Fear 454 all I did was take a piece of wood, you see it? some gate hinges two pieces of, of wood and you just have to make sure you have something to brace it to clear the motor without blocking all those vents so you can see back there hopefully you can see that there's just a block that shims to, to the right height to keep it level and still enough room to give the motor some airflow it's not the sturdiest thing in the world but it's also not the most expensive thing in the world this must have cost me 20 bucks to get this done but it works so far so good so all right we're gonna start off with our finger relief and uh, this is gonna be a little different than the the first contouring video that I showed in the how to make a knife series is I'm going to do it all by hand, all freehand and we're going to take the two inch wheel that comes standard on just about every grinder out there and we're going to grind like we're grinding a blade now, that's, uh, that's the helpful thing of tilting a grinder on its side now when it's, when it's upright you can, you can still do it this way it's just a little awkward of an angle so if you flip your grinder on the side, I'm, I'm telling you this is just like grinding a blade, it's so much easier. Now, all right, I'll show what it looks like. This is a 220 grit belt, by the way. This is what I'll use for uh, hogging it out, and then I'll probably switch over to a 400 or an 800. I went right up to the screw hole. You can tell if it's even by looking at the hourglass shape it's going to start making. You can see I gotta work on it a little bit, but that was what, 30 seconds worth? Okay, so you can see the shape is pretty even on the bottom there. Now if it's a little bit off, I save that for the finer belts. And we're just up to the screw hole there, and just up to the screw hole there. Don't mind all the garbage on it, but you see? So that's pretty even. Now I'm going to switch out to a wheel. Well, you could do the cleanup passes now. Eh, we might as well. So, all right.
Pretty much sand off. There we go. Tiny little waves we can get out by hand. Because like I said, it is G10, but that's pretty clean. Now, now to match it up to the other side. Okay, like I said, tiny variations we can go out and get by hand. But that's pretty, pretty even. Like I said, tiny little differences is no big deal. Okay. Now I'm going to switch out to my wheel, my 12 inch wheel, <laughs> and do the, uh, do the big contours. Grab my wheel. Oh, wrong hole. <laughs> Where is that 220? Right in front of me. Oh no, that's a full thing. Here's the 220. Get that set. Just tracking a little bit. Okay, same thing, just like you're grinding a blade, except now we're doing it sideways. Okay. Now we're starting to get that cool shape on the bottom. Okay, we'll take it right up to the screw hole, just like that. See, Nate? You just want to check the bottom, make sure you got a consistent shape. Let me dip it in water so you can see it. Off. Okay, you can see. Hopefully, you can see it. You got a consistent shape. It might be a little bit off. Remember, this is 220, so we still got to do the 800. And of course, you don't want to leave these sharp points here. So we're going to hand sand all that out. So we got the two arches, just like that. That cool shape on the bottom. And if you want, you could even go up top and put more of those arches in. But this is fairly comfortable already. So now all I'm going to do is go in and knock these corners off. These sharp corners and just kind of round it out a little bit.
So that's all, just chamfering the edges. Now this doesn't have to be perfect or or anything, you just get it close. As a matter of fact, I'll show you that you don't need this cool little tilty feature. Let's do it the old way. <laughs> That's one way to do it. Okay. Yeah, see, I couldn't bolt mine down. Obviously, ideally, you would bolt yours down. I just don't have the room. So, let me move you so you can see it. Hopefully, you can see this. That's all. We're just trying to get a general idea. We're just roughing out a shape right now. G10 is nice because all the final work can be done by hand. But it could also be done on here too if you got a real steady hand. See? Could all be done on here. No big deal. Alright. Tell you what, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna hand sand this up to, I don't know, about 800 grit. Alright, I put about a half hour worth of charge on this battery and I'm watching it decline. So, I gotta make this quick. Uh, Alright, we left off with the handles are uh, sanded to 800 grit. The handles are installed and the screws are tightened all the way, but as you can see, now they're snug against the backspacer, uh, the backspacer, geez, uh, against the standoff. So we have to um, shorten the screws. So what I like to do to shorten the screws is I took a scrap piece of G10 and I countersunk a hole in it. See the screw sticking out of the bottom right there? So now I'll go up to the belt sander and I'll just press on it until that's flush. So I'm pretty much cutting, I want to say, what is that, maybe a 3 16 of an inch off the end of the screw. So I'm just going to grind those down. And this way they're all the same length. 
I'll use uh, a 60 grit belt and then I'll kind of shine them up a little bit with a 220. Now there's one other issue which as you can see my only one of them though the jimping goes into the handle and I'll show you how I fix that so let me tilt you down so you can see oh, right here we have my Dremel with a 1 8 carbide uh, burr bit so what I'll do is I'll get in there just like this I guess I'll just do it Make sure you guys can see that. And that's all there is to it. Once I put a little oil on it, clean it up with a Q-tip, you'll see it'll blend right in. For stuff that's not G10, uh, you might have to get in there. And I've actually uh, wrapped a chopstick or just a, a little dowel in sandpaper to get in there and clean that out. But as you can see, now it's all uh, all matched up. So let's uh, let's shorten those screws, and then uh, I'll come back and I'll show you a, a way to kind of put a nicer finish on these screws. You see there, it's kind of boring. So we'll uh, we'll shine them up so they match the satin on the knife. All right, we got our 60 grit belt, our little fixture, and we're gonna go. Shorten some screws. So I go. Let me cool that off. Ooh, those little screws get hot. So I go until they're flush. You see? So I kind of sacrifice the G10 a little bit. No big deal. So I'll do them all 60 grit. And then I'll go back and do them again, maybe like a 220, kind of clean them up a little bit. I seriously just blew the breaker. <laughs> now, they're all shortened. They're all shortened, but let's make those uh, screw heads a little decorative, huh? I'm not sure if you can see that, but I got our little screws. I got one of them mounted in the drill press with a 1, 2, 3 block under it. I told you I use these 1, 2, 3 blocks for everything. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up that, let me see if that shows up. Come on, focus. The factory finish on these is... These something to be desired, there you go. There's little divots in it and everything. So we're going to clean that up. So I'll start off with some 220 grit paper. You don't need a whole lot, a small piece is fine. Put a little WD-40 on it. Start off that drill press. And we're going to just get in there. And you see I'm going in between the hole, the one, two, three, and the one, two, three block. Just light pressure, just enough to clean up the surface. We don't want to remove any metal really. But let's clean them all up. 
Now you can do this by hand also. So just get in there. And shine them up. Now you can do this all the way up to a mirror finish if you want. See that right here I have a, a Scotch Sprite belt from my old 1x30. This is a rough grit. So I'll take this, I'll wrap it around. And I'll just press it in just like that. The give in the Scotch Sprite belt is going to help clean it up and give it a nice circular pattern. So let's take a look at that. Now with these, do not, I don't even use the key when I tighten them, I just tighten them by hand. Don't crunch them down in the chuck or you'll ruin the threads. Let's see if I can wipe that off. My shirt of course. Let's see if that shows up. See now it's got a nice satin finish. Don't mind all the gook in the middle, I'll clean that out. But little details like that make a difference. You know, compare it to one that isn't done. See, you have all those odd marks. And you could take this all the way up to a mirror finish or however high you want to go. Yeah, don't, don't mind the knife maker hands. Look at the screws. <laughs> you see what I mean? Much better. Just gives it a nicer look. Our little threaded standoffs are just a hair too long. So I'm going to do the same thing. Matter of fact, using the same hole uh, for my screw shortening little block here. Do the same thing and I'm going to shorten the standoffs just a little bit. So everything is custom fitted and it, everything will get nice and tight. So this is the way to do it. And so no sense in showing you that, but I figure I'd tell you about it because you might have to do this too. So now I'll just go up to the sander, take a little bit off, test it, take a little bit more off, test it. Now you can get fancy and measure and do all this stuff. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be within a thousandth of an inch. As long as it works and you didn't take too much off, you know, just don't go crazy. Just take a little bit, go test it, take a little bit, go test it. It takes two seconds. Well guys, that looks like it's about it. That wraps up another tutorial. Here is the finished product. Don't mind the fingerprints. This is again is the Model 800. You got that cool looking, I guess it's a kind of a coffin contour shape, whatever it is. Looks cool. Running out of battery again. <laughs> but as you can see, the screws are all fitted. Maybe we could show you that. And these little, I think that's just fluff or something. Lint or fingerprints or whatever. Screws are all nicely done, no gaps, no seams, everything's nice and clean. You see, just some paper towel lint. And this is a pretty basic contour, as you can see it just rounded out the edges, it's very comfortable, very very comfortable. Um, I think this will be a good knife. This one's out of AEBL steel and everything. I'll do another video just on some knives I got going out and stuff like that. So I'm not going to beat you up over that. Of course, uh, I had to delay it a little bit because I had to do this. Put the picture up on Instagram that the tutorial is coming. I already see some familiar faces on there. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you for the support. Uh, hopefully, this uh, video comes together nicely. I cut it and chop it and all that stuff and edit it so it's not five hours long because I've been in here all day <laughs> so that's it guys that's removable handle scales if you have any questions put them down in the description box below and I'll help you out the best I can and uh, you know what before I go some of the benefits of this uh, that I've covered in the video already is number one is I could take these off and refinish the handles. I refinish the knife, regrind it, do whatever I need to do, and I don't have to worry about it. The other nice thing is the user. Whoever buys this can 
if they drop it in a lake or something, they could take it apart, clean it up real nice. There's a, a million and one benefits. The biggest one is no more glue. I hated gluing knives. I'm telling you, once you start doing this, you're going to want to do this to all of them. Because it might be a little bit more work up front, but no finishing of those pins, especially those steel pins. Just works out nice. But that's it, guys. This is Mike from Ecom Knives. I hope you liked the tutorial, and I'll see you on the next video.